hydroponics are not just a fad. They're not just a hobby. They're also not a quick fix. But the current model is completely unsustainable. I mean, not to get too dramatic, but we really are starving our grandchildren just to feed our kids. We're destroying thousands of acres of beautiful, lush rainforest. Look, the facts I'm about to give you should not be taken lightly. We destroy over 40 acres of rainforest for agriculture every minute. Since you started this video, we've destroyed over 40 acres of rainforest for agriculture. Now really, there's two things you can do about it. Since a lot of this land is being leveled to plant grain and feed for livestock, we could all go vegan. No? No takers? Okay. Well, since that's not going to happen, we have to have a full systemic overhaul, a relook at how we grow produce in the first place. So I put together this list of 10 reasons why hydroponics, vertical farming, could save our rainforests, our urban landscape, our atmosphere, and dare I even say it, the entire planet. So let's dive in. First, let's talk about water efficiency. Hydroponics uses significantly less water compared to traditional soil-based farming. Water is recirculated in the system, reducing the overall consumption and combating water scarcity issues in a lot of regions. Most hydroponic methods report 91 to 96% less water usage than traditional soil. Currently, agriculture is responsible for 70% of all fresh water used. Let me say that again. Agriculture is responsible for 70% of all fresh water used. 4 billion gallons every single day. If we implemented hydroponics on a large scale, we could save over 3.5 billion gallons of water every day. These are all facts. If this seems too far-fetched for you, then I implore you to please go look it up for yourself. The statistics are incredible. Next, let's talk about land utilization. Hydroponics allows for vertical farming methods, which is where you stack plants on top of each other and grow them vertically instead of across one single bed. Because of this, hydroponic gardens, vertical farms, and tower gardens have reported one-sixth of the amount of land usage. So a one-acre farm, if turned into a hydroponic farm, can produce six acres of produce. That's pretty cool. This is how we're going to save the rainforest, people. Not by buying wristbands or t-shirts, but by implementing real change. So next is the reduced environmental impact. The hydroponic method minimizes the need for pesticides and herbicides since it's a controlled environment. Consequently, it lowers chemical runoff and the associated environmental pollution. No more organic labels reassuring us that pesticides weren't used. Everything would be organic the way it's supposed to be. If you want to know just how pervasive the herbicide and pesticide issue is, look into the class action lawsuit against Roundup right now. You'll also get an idea of just how many cases of cancer have been linked directly to pesticides. It's staggering. Next, let's talk about enhanced crop growth. In hydroponics, plants have constant access to all their essential nutrients, leading to faster grow rates and higher yields compared to traditional farming methods. This increase in efficiency can help meet the global demand for food. So now we're talking about something that takes up one-sixth of the amount of space and grows three times as quickly. So you can take one acre, for instance, of a lettuce farm, let's say, that grows 26,000 heads of lettuce every season in one acre. Okay, well, we would multiply that by six for the area and by three for the season. Now that one acre that was producing 26,000 heads of lettuce is producing 468,000 heads of lettuce by implementing hydroponics. It's out there. I'm not bullshitting. These are facts. Go look it up for yourself. So next, let's talk about year-round production. Hydroponics can operate in indoor environments or greenhouses, providing a controlled environment for the crops to grow regardless of the external weather conditions or the seasonal limitations. So places like Alaska or Siberia on one end of the scale or like Ethiopia or Nevada even on the other end of the scale can now grow their own produce. I mean, just think about how far all that food has to travel to end up on those massive Las Vegas buffets. And that brings me to my next fact. Reduce transportation costs and emissions. Implementing hydroponics in urban areas or regions close to consumers can reduce the distance and time required to transport produce, as well as the carbon emissions down to almost nothing. 
Look, currently your average carrot travels 1,500 miles before it gets to your fridge. That's the distance from New York City to Colorado on average. A lot of this is because California is responsible for most of the monocropping and for the soil farming in the entire country. But if you look at population density, the East Coast is by far more densely populated than anywhere else in the country. So it has to make that huge voyage just to get from one coast to the other. If hydroponic farms were introduced in large scale in every city in America, that number could be cut down to a fraction, just 10 or 20 miles. Carbon emissions would be almost nothing. So now let's talk about sustainable agriculture. Hydroponics can be combined with renewable energy sources to create a sustainable, eco-friendly agricultural system, further reducing its carbon footprint. So I'm currently running all of my lights and pumps off of solar power and I plan to get a dehumidifier to pull moisture out of the air and use that water in the garden itself. Now doing this has actually created a carbon sink. My garden is now doing more good than it is harm. This is all because of the wonders of photosynthesis and the way that plants actually clean the air. Next, I'm gonna talk about how we can tailor our crop growth. The controlled environment in hydroponics enables growers to adjust nutrient levels, uh, temperature, humidity, and other variables to optimize crop growth. This level of customization can lead to better crop quality and consistency. Look, I implore you to go talk to any farmer and I bet you they'll have a story about a season when they lost an entire crop due to unforeseen weather. You know, in recent years, atmospheric warming has caused unusual monsoon-like rains in areas that would have typically been dry or the opposite, dry seasons in areas that typically would have been wet. That unpredictability has thrown chaos into the agricultural framework. With hydroponics, more specifically with a vertical farm, you're not gonna be dealing with any outside conditions. Everything that the plant needs to thrive is contained within the garden. It doesn't matter if it rains, it doesn't matter if it's too hot, your plants are gonna thrive all year round. And because of this, if we were able to implement hydroponics on a large scale, this would actually drive down the price of produce worldwide significantly due to a balance in supply and demand. The next thing is really cool, and I don't think it's considered that often, but it's the urban air purification. So because hydroponics uses one sixth of the amount of space, it could pretty much grow anywhere all year round, the urban landscape is ideal for future vertical farming. So like imagine a city like Denver, New York, or LA, where um, it's not unusual for a building's footprint to be an acre or more even. Um, in order to find that building's area, you would just multiply that acre footprint by the amount of stories it is. So let's say a 30-story apartment building that has a, a one-acre footprint would be 30 acres of floor space. Now that's pretty cool to be able to grow 30 acres in the middle of a city, but we're talking about hydroponics. We can multiply that number by six because we're growing vertically on every floor. Now we're talking about having a 30 story building in the middle of Denver that can grow, ready for this? 180 acres worth of produce. But that's not all. Indoor gardening requires an HVAC system, meaning there has to be fresh air coming in and air going out. All houses and buildings have an HVAC system and this would be very standard, but what it would mean for a giant vertical farm is that the air going out of the building would actually be cleaner than the air coming in the building. So you would basically have a huge 180 acre air purifier in the middle of these densely populated and densely polluted urban landscapes. That's f***ing rad, people. Now let's talk about soil degradation. Traditional agriculture often leads to soil erosion and degradation due to continuous farming. Hydroponics eliminates this issue altogether, making it a viable long-term solution for maintaining soil health. So if you're interested in more and learning about this, I highly recommend the documentary, Kiss the Ground. You'll also learn in that documentary that if we change the way we currently grow produce, we can create carbon sinks vast areas that actually pull carbon from the atmosphere into the soil. It's a really, really cool process that we completely interrupt through modern tilling procedures. So lastly, and one of the coolest things about hydroponics is that they are adaptable to various locations. Hydroponic systems can be set up in diverse geographic locations, including urban areas, deserts, or areas with poor soil quality, expanding the potential for agriculture in areas where traditional farming might not be feasible. Look, this is a fast track to ending global hunger. Shipping container vertical farms can be placed anywhere, even in the middle of the ocean or on top of a mountain, bringing fresh, high-quality produce to places that have never even tasted fresh fruit or veggies before.
I mean, can you imagine? How cool is that? So all of these reasons, especially that last one, are exactly why I'm doing this channel. I've decided to dedicate my entire life to lobbying for hydroponics. I have huge dreams that are currently being manifested on this channel, but I can't do it alone. I really need people like you. People who are also hungry for change, for growth, for a full revolution of consciousness. I'm trying to talk about how we can affect change on a large scale. Lobbying for government subsidies. Talking about the issues and confronting them with personal accountability. I'm completely responsible for what I buy and what I eat. And it makes me sick when I think about the negative impact I've had on this planet just by accepting what is. So let's grow together. Thank you.